Hey, hey, hey! It's Game Toppers 3.0 after Kickstarter late pledge manager party Ooh. celebration! Got to do it right, right? Is this how you taught me how to do it? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Uh, we're going to uh, probably just take a little bit of time to talk about a few things as people join us. We posted uh, some updates about this live show, uh, and so hopefully we'll have people join us. But we also know it's, it's noon central time, so sometimes people can catch it at their lunch break, but other times they have to view this later. But we want to First off, really express our gratitude and our thanks for making this campaign so fantastic. Um, Josiah, it's it's such a crazy run doing a campaign, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, the amount of work that goes into preparing to do the campaign is amazing. But then once you get into the campaign, it's an amazing amount of modulating and, and thinking on your feet and moving and depending on how, how things are going and then listening to our backers and seeing if we can make changes. Yep. Uh, Josiah has been very, very integral in so many of those decisions because he manages the back end of our software with backer kit, with our Kickstarter pledges, um, and likewise, all of the shipping scenarios and maybe uh, you can talk about the complexity of, of shipping for just a second about what all goes into those plots. Yeah, I mean, there's just, there's a lot that goes into it because you have to account for all the different scenarios, you know, different locations that are shipping to, but then also what they're ordering, how to get those to combine for the, the most efficient savings for shipping, so you can combine what items you can. Um, while still working within the limitations of you know the systems that we have, so uh, it can definitely be a challenge because there's there's always a way to break it somehow, and you're you're trying to make sure that those breakages are the least least likely to happen. Well, it's uh you know right after the Kickstarter campaign, I honestly I was really fatigued, really exhausted. It was like my my head was spinning a little bit. It was such a such an amazing time and it, it's all good but we really poured our heart into it and worked some crazy hours that nobody should have to work <laughs> and i went camping for a few days uh, my wife joined me for two of those days and then i had two days just to decompress but that whole time uh josiah was doing all of the backer kit lake pledge manager and and we actually overmax this software capabilities. Josiah's worked with a lot of the software engineers of Backer Kit and they actually listened to him with some of his ideas and, and been able to collaborate on a few items. Um, but because of his uh, familiarity and expertise is a better way to say it with that software, he was able to make this pledge manager so user friendly. Um, I, had, I had just small sales related type of input to, to help that. And Josiah really ran with this baby and he worked for a week solid. Uh, to talk a little bit about what goes into making this pledge manager and the thoughts you had on making it friendly for our customers. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely a lot that goes into it. We had a little bit of a head start because we're able to use our past Kickstarters to kind of jumpstart the process, but all the new items that we unlocked need to get added. Uh, the graphics for them have separate graphics from the Kickstarter because they have different requirements. Um, updating the graphics of all the stuff from the last Kickstarter, uh, adding you know the new mat choices and mat designs that adds a lot of a lot of extra stuff. <laughs> when when I keep telling him we're going to add new mats and more sizes and things like that, he just looks at me and shakes his head because uh, uh, every time I do that to him, he you know, I probably added another 48 hours of of work on the back end stuff that he has to deal with. And that doesn't include shipping it and storing it. That's just making the software work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of kind of exponential increases in, uh, in adding mats because you have one mat style, but then you put that over 12 sizes and then that 12 sizes affects, you know, like 50 items on the, the store. and. Uh, <laughs> 
it, it, it multiplies quick. It's complicated and, and it's, it's hard to even explain why it's complicated because sometimes it, it's hard for me to even wrap my head around <laughs> it sometimes. And Josiah knows it very well, but um, that's why sometimes we just have to say, I'm sorry, we can't do that because uh, it just makes it too complicated and too convoluted and then could cause mistakes for other things down the road, which we definitely wouldn't want to have. I see we have some people. We should maybe make some quick uh, acknowledgments to who is in the live feed. Do you want to post a few of those pictures or, or uh, comments? So level up with the V's says, can't wait. That was right before the stream went live. Cool. And Raven's in the house. Happy Friday indeed. And yeah, we've got more Meeple super excited for our first game topper. Wow, that's going to be awesome. When you guys get this baby on your table and you start to uh, play on it, you're going to go, where has this been all of my life? I mean, big fun is coming your way. Yeah. Uh, Gator Dave says, hey, gent. And then the same, gent, same, can't wait to get the first game topper. Woohoo! Uh, Steve saying, at least for me, the link in the recent email pointing to the stream doesn't work. Contained all the text above it. Uh, huh. I don't know what happened. I, I shared it actually from the YouTube channel, so that's kind of weird. Got to look at that. And congrats on the great campaign. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. Um, we're going to answer everyone's questions. If people have questions about the pledge, uh, anything you have questions about, we're going to answer. We're going to talk a little bit about the backer choice map surveys that we sent out. Of course, we didn't unlock those stretch goals to create the actual backer choice. We've had a bit of confusion about that where people are saying, what maps can I order? For what are the backer choice? Well, that's for development for a future time, but we actually even didn't unlock it. But we're still going to take all the momentum and everything we did to lift the backers and create those. It's just going to take some time. And right now we have to really focus hard on getting all the fulfillment orders in and everything so that we can manage wave one and wave two fulfillment uh, well. And then at, when we come back to again and, and offer the Mycroft products that we're going to be offering and all these new items, we'll be able to plug those things right in. So they will be available and our backers will have that feedback uh, to help us make those choices. Uh Dave says, do you have a final date on address changes set yet? So there's no final date for addresses because what will end up happening is uh, usually for U.S. orders uh, and the Canadian orders, they're going to get an email a couple of days before those orders are actually shipping, maybe a week. And so you'll have that final notice to change your address at that point because we want to send that out as late as possible in case anyone's moving, things like that. International orders, it'll be similar, but it'll be before it leaves the United States. So as we're those orders and getting ready to, to pack them because once they're packed they can't be changed anymore uh, and we need the address to that point to, to label it correctly and things like that so international orders will get an email similarly but it's going to be before it actually you know is going to arrive right away but it'll be and you're going to see a lot of updates from us by the way too as as we're getting ready to start you know wave one fulfillment is going to be in stages it's not like just one day and we send out 300 toppers it doesn't work quite like that. it's like we can ship out about 25 units a day you know if we're really really cruising and uh, so within a week we can usually get a whole segment of a particular style of toppers and a lot of that is depending on which ones are have come in and all of those. There's a lot of dynamic to that, but uh, we will be very communicative about that. Okay, we're starting wave one fulfillment. So, so like the sculpted toppers are going out this week. Uh, next week, the Watson toppers are going out. Then Holmes toppers or whatever the case might be. Uh, and that's always fluid depending on what our 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 software is telling us, what product we have in, and what how we can most efficiently do it. Yep. Uh, we really had really good success with that last year. If it had not been for COVID, I think we would have delivered all of our product about two months ahead of time. And then COVID messed it all up. But because um, we had about half of it already done two months beforehand and we were really streaming quickly. But nonetheless, we hope that 
uh, if we don't have any shipping problems or anything like that, uh, right now we have a little bit of a container issue down in China with our storage mats uh, or the, the storage bags and the mats. The orders are ready. They've been ready for two weeks and it's still not scheduled for the container shipment. It still should get here with plenty of time, so I'm not overly worried about it, but those are things that I can't control. Thankfully, we had a good month of fluff built in to our equation, but sometimes that's the way the world works right now. But yeah, shipping is crazy right now. Yeah, Especially shipping is international nice. container shipping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, still catching up from backlogs last year, plus it's almost like there was a giant delay in shipping across the globe. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, I wonder how that could happen. <laughs> yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, uh, Vidigur says, looking forward to the legs. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then Stefan asks, can we add more mats and mat racks in the pledge manager? Yes. So we're actually probably going to go through a kind of example survey here in not too long to give everyone an idea of just how it looks. We sent this out in an update, but also we can go through it here. So if you have any questions on how the, the pledge manager survey works, if you have completed it or haven't completed it, you can ask it here. You can also email me at support at gametoppersllc.com and I can help you out there as well. So One thing I'd like to uh, talk about just real quick as we continue to go through some of these comments is that we've launched the, the, the pledge manager now. So if you pledge during our campaign, you're getting a survey. That survey works a little bit different than if you hadn't backed the campaign and you just came in late. Um, it's gonna work similar, but, but a little bit differently. So if you've backed for a product, you now have the opportunity to change that pledge and or add to that pledge. And it's pretty straightforward. Uh, once you make it, the questions will ask you, do you want, what's your first map? What's your second map? Uh, do you want to get the game hall bag for that crazy cool 20 bucks instead of $40, which is still a great price? Uh, did you want to get the acrylic covers, which we unlocked that stretch goal where you could get those for 20 bucks. Uh, in my mind, this is an absolute no brainer. I think you'll love them. Uh, but anyway, we asked those questions, so we made it really simple for you. Um, it's, it's really clicking a button and then going on. Then you can look through the store and say, oh, yeah, I want to get another dice tower set, or I want to get a, a rail bundle, or I want to get a leaf bundle, and you just click it, boom, it's all good to go. Uh, we are only going to offer the, the unlocked stretch goals and the current package pricing through July 5th. So July 5th, uh, everybody can still take advantage of it. And it's the reason we're doing it this way is a lot of our, our product is determined on, on uh, efficiencies, on how to order enough product, to also ship enough product to a location like Europe. And we want to get people involved so we have enough volume to, to make it work. Um, but I also want to just reward our initial Kickstarter backers so you can take advantage of all these specials. But we offered so many really crazy good deals like those mat rack bundles. Um, those are really, really good deals that we really sacrificed a lot of margin that I wanted to do that as a reward, a loyalty reward to all of our backers. And most of the people that jumped in on that were, you know, past backers that wanted to get a whole bunch more mats because they love our mats, right? <laughs> Uh, so, but after July 5th, we're going to lock all of the surveys uh, from, and, uh, and, and all the people that have filled out those surveys are going to get locked. Your credit cards at that time will be charged. People can still late pledge after that, but some of these stretch goals that are really wonderful, they're either going to go away or they're going to be changed in price. Like the leg kit is a stretch goal but you're going to be able to buy the leg kit after the fact, but probably not at the exact same price. So some of our prices need to modulate up a little bit. Um, what I think a lot of folks don't know about with, with that we know about really intimately is how many extra things come up um, after the fact for us as far as cost of doing business. Uh, shipping has been one of the biggest things that we just, 
you, last year we spent over a quarter of a million dollars in shipping and you get these costs that you know that you don't expect you get drayage charges uh, in Australia last year, we lost close to $3,000 doing that. And at that point, I didn't feel comfortable going back to the backers and say, hey, everybody, I need another 50 bucks. We did. We chose not to do that. Uh, we worked really hard to get our prices in line and do a lot of diligence about our pricing. So we did our homework, but this world is changing and we can't, we can't just, if they raise our, our cost to us, we just can't eat it. Uh, our margins are too low for us to do that. And as, as much as shipping costs, it's just kind of the way it is. And it's it pains me to no end because I feel it just like you feel it. And I, I don't want to charge you more. Um, but when things change, there's not much I can do about it. So we always say that these are good faith estimates and they are subject to change. We hope that mostly what we did, we're going to be able to honor. Uh, there's some very small differences we might be able to talk about a little bit later if you have any questions. But with that saying, you have till July 5th, get in on all the good deals, fill out those surveys, and pump them all out. If we can get those all done, it gives us a lot of ammunition to, to make sure we make the right purchasing decisions. And as soon as you can do that for us, we really appreciate it. Long explanation, sorry there. <laughs> Uh, Gator Dave says, is the final leg shipping freight or a standard delivery service, UPS, DHL, FedEx? So it will depend on where you are, but for the US, we use UPS for the majority of our shipments. Um, occasionally, we will use uh, other services. In Canada, it goes out with a kind of freight service. It's not like a like UPS, DHL. Um, and then in other countries as well through Europe and, uh, you know, Australia and UK, they have different services that they use depending on our fulfillment partner and what they have there. So, uh, but yes, in the UPS, in the US, it is UPS for the most part. Uh, Colin says, I just joined, so you may have answered this, but is the estimated final delivery for wave two still November, 2021? Yep. Yes. So yeah, the estimates haven't changed for the, the wave two delivery. Um, we'll keep you in, in the loop. You know, if we have any unexpected delays or things like that, of course, we'll let you know, but as of now, everything is on track. We've built in some extra, you know, time on our estimates anyway, in case there are some delays. Um, cause you never know when it comes to production it's kind of just, a there's, there's always variables that we can't control and, you know, you don't know they're going to happen. So we, we kind of anticipate that they're going to happen. Um, you know, we weren't able to anticipate what happened last year, you know, with the pandemic and what that meant. Right now, the only hesitation I have about Wave 2 products is possibly the dining covers uh, because of wood shortages right now. We're being told... The costs have gone through the roof. Uh, we didn't anticipate that. And we're just not making very much money on these tiny covers, <laughs> to be honest. So the prices have to go up. Uh, so you got 30 days to get in on the good prices. But uh, we still think we're, we've been told that we have like a six week turnaround for the production. Uh, they're very popular. People love them. We're also going to be working on the prototypes for the Mycroft that, that we're going to explore, even going to the one inch material for the extra span, some different things like that. But it takes time to do all that. I think I think we're going to be OK for November, but well, best best that we know we're on track. Um, it's unheard of to do what we're doing there. You never hear of a Kickstarter fulfilling in three months like we are. Uh, but a lot of preparation went into this last year to make that happen. Uh, likewise, we have product that has been produced and, and was ordered back in December that's all done, but it's waiting to be shipped here. Uh, we ordered a bunch, like I think it was a hundred of each of the Watson and Holmes, all of the new mats, you know, like the Rome mat, the, the, the Viking, the pirate, or the, the pirate, the Great Wall, and all of that so that they would be here on time. Now, if, if we have extended delays on that, that's gonna mess with that a little bit. We're hoping that within the next week or so, that ship is gonna sail and we'll be fine, but we'll see. 
Uh, Nathan says, will the extra mats be shipped in wave one or will they come in wave two? Can't wait to get my copper and all the extra mats. And that's a, that's a situation, just what I was saying. If, the, if that comes in by the time we start shipping out wave one, um, and honestly, if you, if you have a wave one ship and you ordered one of the new mats and we don't have them yet, it will be very difficult for us to send that out until those mats arrive because it costs us another $20 a package to ship those separately. And also those packages are designed to incorporate them for safety of the entire package. Um, we're hoping that's not gonna be a problem. So, but we did plan for it. So hopefully, hopefully we're good. Uh, Man on Fire says, congratulations on an awesome campaign. Thank you, thank you. Gator Dave says, thank you for the answers. Congrats again on the campaign. I hope material costs start coming back down to earth for you all. That would be wonderful. <laughs> uh, the Charity Board Gamer says, a celebration of the hard work you've all done. Well deserved. Can't wait to get those sweet legs and coaster inserts. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, Chris has been such a great supporter. Chris Goodlett from uh, the Charity Board Gamer has been a really great supporter, owns our product. and has been so kind to share that and, and uh, send me private words of encouragement. And uh, uh, you don't know how much that means to us when we, when people thank us and it's like, we're not looking for thanks. You backing it is thanks enough. But when you guys do share what game toppers means to you and your family and how it's upgraded your gaming experience and, and enriched your life in a small way, um, those kind of things really mean a lot to us. So we really appreciate that. And thank you so much for the encouragement because uh, we work really hard for that. And sometimes it's, it's exhausting. And then all of a sudden somebody will come up and tell us something like that. And it's like, all right, we're doing well. We can, we can keep pushing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Troy says, you guys are the best Kickstarter I have responded to. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Man on Fire asked, what would be the best map for Zombicide? Ooh. Boy, there's quite a few, I think, that could play into that. What do you think? I'm not sure. I have not played Zombicide, so I do not know. Well, you know, I, th I think the dungeon map with the one-inch squares and that cobblestone floor type of thing could work. Um, but our adventure map, I think, would work fine, too. It depends on the which Zombicide you're playing. Um, the castle map would work really well if you're playing the Black Plague uh, one because uh, it's kind of got that little bit more of that medieval type thing. But you could play the fantasy map too, the colors, and you got some fantasy elements, but still I think it would work. But uh, Colin Anderson says, maybe if you made the dining covers out of solid gold, it would be cheaper than wood. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> it's almost true. <laughs> Uh, Jonathan asked, will Canada and other overseas orders have to wait for all packages to be packed before being shipped, similar to the Kickstarter 2 where there was a group delay? Uh, so yeah, so just like last time, especially with the overseas orders, those will be grouped into one shipment that will go to the fulfillment hubs and then out from there. For Canada, however, there are two shipments. So we have Wave 1, where all the Canadian Wave 1 orders will be uh, packed and shipped in July, August. And then the wave two um, shipment will happen uh, after the, the U.S. wave two fulfillment, so right around November is what we're currently what, One of the things that bothered me on the last campaign is that it's like, I don't want to have Europe have to wait to the end. I don't want Canada have to wait to the end. It's not like I'm choosing, uh, we're shipping domestic product first and then everybody else has to wait. I don't like that. I don't, I, I value everyone the same. Um, it's a logistical thing though, so that we can get the cost down. And with Canada, the way we have our warehousing situation, it's probably going to cost us an extra $1,800 that we're eating to ship these two shipments um, because we can send the whole semi there. And by doing it twice, we increase that cost. But we felt, hey, if you jumped in on wave one, we're just going to bless everybody with that, that thing, just like we would in the United States. And it's costing us a little, so we're eating that because you can't charge more for wave one shipping and less for wave two or, you know, all of that. But we just wanted to make that accommodation. And then 
uh, Europe and all that, that we really do need to combine one. We need to fill up one big container to make that really work financially for us, honestly. If we only had 20, 30 coppers, it'd be a big lose uh, for us uh, in that market. But that's not been the case. So hopefully we'll, again, have really good European sales and that type of thing. Uh, Giovanni says, what are y'all's favorite mats? I'm torn between the Viking, the Ryan Lockett, the wood grain, and the crimson red. Can't wait to play the first game on my topper. I mean, my favorite mat is the Viking. My the, the Viking has always been my favorite um, before the adventure mat, um, but I, I really like so many of our mats. The dungeon mat, I think, is really underrated. Whenever we have that dungeon mat on our toppers at shows, people just like, oh, I want that. It's that nice in person. And, in our, even though we have that nice video catalog on the bottom of the campaign and we have pictures, they just don't do them justice when you see them. And art is so subjective, you know, and the type of games you want to play too. But the scythe inspired mat is so beautiful. Uh, the Rome mat I'm just enamored with. The new Vincent Detroit mat, I can't not look at it. I'm just so happy with it. But I think the pirate mat is my favorite. But I do have to tell you something. When it comes to number counts and sales, after we improve the wood grain mat to be that new high resolution wood grain that looks so good with the walnut and the, the oak, uh, people are buying that wood grain mat. And that thing is red used to be a real popular one. And the wood grain is actually outselling now the solid colors. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, Steven asks, any updates slash progress on the leg kits for the Moriarty toppers? Yeah, uh, good question. The the leg kits, the legs themselves actually work in the rail. So you can technically buy a set of legs and connect them to the rails right now. Uh, so if you own a Moriarty or Mycroft, you can do that. The only problem is the center support piece. That's the part that's still in development. We do have a working model of that and a prototype ordered. So we're already working on it. And I'm hoping within a month or so, we will actually have those parts and be able to test them. And if that all goes well, we'll be able to get into production and get through those kind of ideas. We have a, a couple working theories there that we think is going to work really well. And so if you had, if you bought the legs right now and say you had a center table, like a, a six foot by 30 inch plastic folding table and you have the Mycroft on it, you could actually put the legs all the way on the two ends because your center is supported. That would provide a lot of extra stability on the corners and essentially you'd have a leg table. You just wouldn't have the center support yet. And you could order those after the fact too. Jamie says, great campaign, can't wait for the legs and try them in my home. So the question is, will the legs be wave one? We get this question a lot, but no, uh, all of the new product with the exception of all those mats that we ordered in the Watson and Holmes just to do wave one, um, all of the, the new things that we're doing, those are for later fulfillment because they're not produced yet. That's why we went to Kickstarter. The legs, we don't have them. Uh, we won't have them in time for wave one. That's why we, we slated those for November. We're expecting all that stuff to come in in October and hopefully that that's the way all that will go so uh, willie says the wood grain mat would work for zombicide yeah you bet uh the charity board gamer says i looked on the backer kit for the berkey seasoning and berkey jerky sadly i did not see them <laughs> <laughs> you know when we were doing all the conventions uh there's a lot of stories circulating about people coming up to me and i've got jerky homemade smoked jerky apple cherry wood uh, with uh, my Burke's Happy Mouth Signature Spice. I own a spice company that used to cook professionally. And for those of you that don't know, and people, I've given away a lot of spices to people and they love it. And so I keep making it, even though I have zero time to work on it. And uh, when I run out, people get panicked. I said, no, just, you know, I'll get to it when I can get to it, but <laughs> have not focused. And, but we haven't been to a convention, but the Berkey Jerky is coming back. I got to tell you. Well, in that uh, vein, the Trade Board Gamer says, will we see the Game Toppers family at any conventions this year? Well, we hope so. We're working on some things right now. We have an opportunity to share our booth with Arcane Wonders at Gen Con. 
I haven't fully made that decision. I honestly, we weren't really planning on doing conventions this year. We didn't think that was going to be a reality. There seems to be a lot of momentum there and we're still analyzing it, but we're also planning on being at Origins. Uh, Josiah is probably not going to be attending uh, the majority of the conventions this year because he's going to be neck deep in fulfillment. Uh, he may be able to help us out at PAX Unplugged in December. So we'll see what happens there. The jury's still out on uh, going to Essen, Germany. Uh, we would like to, but I have a lot of concerns about that. I'm not exactly sure how that'll work. Um, and we might have to just wait till next year, even though it would probably be great for us to be there. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Uh, Giovanni says, they all look so good. I want them all, but I may just get three mats for now in case I decide to get the XL Leaf in the future. Uh, awesome. Awesome. And there's a lot of those really great double mat bundles. So you could get two double mat bundles. So you could get two of each. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they're thinking singles. But the double mat bundle is such a great deal that you can almost get four mats for the price of three if you do it like that. So a lot of people are doubling on that because if you have a Mycroft, you could get two Moriarty's and you could get two, two Mycroft's. Or if you've got a, a Holmes XL, get two Holmes XL mats and two regular home mats because uh, the price is so good. Gil asks, any chance of future more mat styles for XL sizes? Absolutely. We'll always, uh, it, it, the XL backers are speaking loud and clear. They love the big size. They love getting the leaf and, and they want more variety. And as long as uh, they're popular enough and we can make the quantity and they sell, I'll be thrilled to make more for you. Uh, Big D says, amazing campaign. Thank you for all your hard work and quick responses. Sculpted topper backer here. If I select an Excel insert, what option do I select? Does it matter? Do I send you an email? Yeah, please send us an email on that. I have very limited ability to even do it. Uh, we're going to have a few rails, uh, sculpted rails that I have. I have some rails that were left over that they either the, you know, they didn't perfectly match or there was a little, little slight flaw to them or, you know, the routing wasn't quite right or something. Overall, it was all, they're fine. I have to personally, though, cut them down, sand those edges where we cut it. And there's a way I can do that so it doesn't splinter. I, I'm a good word worker, but uh, we need to also match the stain. And it's going to be a little tricky. Um, and it, it's going to be a a lot of extra attention, personal attention to take care of that. So we will have an op, just email us. And if we have product, we'll do our best to accommodate. The, the best thing to do there would be to probably not add a, a leaf until you, you get a hold of us. And we're probably not going to have a better idea of what we might have available until after July 5th, when we make the changes and we'll kind of be able to see when the surveys have come in, what extras we might have. Uh, and then we can still add that after the fact, no problem. So Correct. we can work that out with you. I've actually set up a file for people that have these requests. Um, I have a few of them and, and my answer has been, I, I think I can help out, but, but if I have too many requests at some point, I'm going to have to say, I don't have product because this is very limited, but email us. We'll keep, keep it in track and we'll keep in touch. Josiah said it just right. You don't need to add anything. Uh, successful Geek says, so excited for my game topper. Woohoo! Uh, hey, I got to say something about this. You know, people talk about how excited they're to get them. Please understand, we are excited to get them to you. I mean, it's the truth. Uh, when, when we send that big batch, that first 100 toppers go out the door, um, the wave of joy that comes to people, we get so much awesome feedback and it makes our heart just so happy. And if we can exceed your expectations, man, we, we work really hard to do it. I don't know if we're always successful, but we really try hard. And uh, man, that's what fuels us. So uh, we're excited too. We can't wait to have you have this moment. So Gil says, uh, I had a chance to have the beef jerky a couple times. Can we add it as add-ons? <laughs> I gotta get a license to do <laughs> cook food. My spice, it's much easier, but uh, <laughs> Hopefully we're going to hook up at a convention, Gil. Love you, man. 
Uh, Jody says, Berkey Jerky. Yep. <laughs> says, make sure to leave the top hat at home if you go to Germany. <laughs> Is there a reason for that? I'm curious. I, I don't understand that one, I don't, but I don't either. Please elaborate. Yeah, please elaborate. Uh, Jody says, really excited for a horror slash steampunk mat for the next Kickstarter. Fingers crossed. Hey, let's talk. I, I see Willie uh, Lewis he says for a horror map too. And uh, before we get to successful geese comment, um, I looked at the surveys again. I updated it. We had 238 responses on the map ideas. Uh, the number one uh, pre prevalent thought was a horror theme map. But then there got to be a whole bunch of different ideas. Some wanted to have like a little graveyard mansion in the background, spooky woods, stuff like that. Uh, a few people said, no, I don't have any games that have graveyards in them. Uh, but pretty much that mansion, uh, mansions of madness type of, you know, a purple, gray, ominous, uh, spooky feeling, um, that was very popular. Uh, we had a few people that are, are jazzed about a steampunk thing. Uh, it wasn't at, at the top of the list by far. Uh, one of the other things that was really popular was a all star field map, where it's just all star fields, less of the space station, maybe a little planet, but basically star stars. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there's also a lot of requests for the all water map. So it'd be all water. And then you get this other group that's really looking for like a desert-y type of terrain that could be used for terraforming Mars and or Star Wars or a little bit more of a war map, but could also be those type of things, craters and, and desert-y thing. Uh, the train map theme and then the variations of ideas on that, a lot of those requests. So we have a pretty significant amount. And so I think we're definitely going to be working on a, a horror theme. Um, when we do our next Kickstarter, it wouldn't surprise me if we're able to bring at least four, maybe six new mat styles. Uh, that requires a ton of work and a lot of art direction, but we have some ideas. And so I, I think there's a good chance. Uh, and we're going to continue to get your feedback on that, too. Uh, Successful Geek says, oh yeah, ready to take lots of pictures and appreciate all of your hard work. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, Giovanni says, so if I get the double mats and the rail mat bundle with the Scotland Yard, will it be wave one or will just the Scotland Yard arrive on wave one? Good question. A lot of people ask that. Essentially, you're going to get the two mats with your Scotland Yard, and if you ordered an extra two, as long as we have stock, they will go out. Uh, I've looked at some of the counts already. I think we've prepared pretty well, but we're getting a lot of orders. So the wave one people will be the first priority. And then and then all the mat, you know, we've told everybody November for the mat pledges, but we're hoping to exceed that expectation if our inventory uh, was done, you know, if we have enough. Uh, Jody clarified the hat comment was regard in regards to customs fees we had where we had to pay for the hats last time. Oh, I forgot about that. That's crazy, right? <laughs> they charged us, and I forget what it was even, but it was crazy. Yeah, uh, we could have just bought new hats in Germany <laughs> instead of. Yeah, that I think crazy. we still have some top hats over there, don't we? Or did we bring them back? I think we brought them back in our luggage. Yeah, we may put them in our suitcase. Yeah, because it fits. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Peter asks, wave one shipping of in-stock tables. Will legs come later? Correct. Legs will come in October, November. Uh, Willie says, I will buy multiple horror theme mats. I'm already buying the Cthulhu mat. <laughs> yeah, we're getting a lot of positive feedback on the Cthulhu mat, and the numbers look really good. We've had a lot of people uh, back that one. Um, all of the new maps have been really well received. Right now, leading the charge is the pirate map. Uh, but we're getting a, a lot of orders for our older maps, too. Uh, the Ryan Lockett, the Wood Grain, the Viking, the Adventure map, and the Space map. They're selling like crazy. So a lot of people are grabbing those as well. 
We are caught up on common. Awesome. Well, you know, uh, we'll, we'll continue to engage you that. We have a backer, and when we set this thing up is, uh, um, you know, we're not heavy drinkers or anything like that, but but we have a backer that's just an awesome uh, friend of, the, of, of Game Toppers. Now, his name is Chris Henderson. And last year, or two years ago, we met him at Origins, and he gave he sent us a a bottle of champagne to celebrate that kickstarter and sure enough behind the scenes unbeknownst to myself he he correlates with Josiah to say hey he wants a celebration party and so we uh we uh actually have purchased a bottle of champagne from compliments of Chris Henderson and we're going to partake of a little bit of a champagne thing. It was actually funny too because he sent me that message in private and we were going to getting the bottle and I had already bought the bottle and then unbeknownst to, to me you had put up the champagne celebration stretch goal even right. without knowing. And so. I didn't know but Dan and I have been working on the graphics because we had it before. Yeah. So that's, that's funny. It was just kind of a fun thing you know Jamie Stegmeyer he I, I love that guy and I've learned so much from him and admire so many things that he's done about Kickstarter. I mean, he's really, really, I gleaned a lot of really good information from him and he would do these backer toasts at the end. And uh, I, I, I couldn't uh, do that for two hours <laughs> 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 because it wouldn't be coherent in very, in very short term. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the thought of us just celebrating together all the goodness of this hobby, the fun of our interaction, our relationship. And, you know, I know it's not like we're best friends, but I feel like you guys are family. You're all a part of this. I'm committed to getting this to you. And I know you've made a commitment to us to help us do this. And that's just so special to us. It's worth celebrating, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Ron says, I just missed the campaign. Any plans for a 2022 Kickstarter? Uh, Mike did let Ron know that he can still late pledge, which is correct. You can go to our Kickstarter page and there's a late pledge button on the top you can click. Um, but what about the 2022 Kickstarter? Um, yes, uh, you can late pledge right now too, by the way. You hit the late pledge button or the late pledge button on our website and till July 5th, you can still take advantage of all the Kickstarter's special package pricing and the unlock stretch goals. 55 unlock stretch goals. You can still take advantage. So, so yes, uh, go ahead and do that. After that, you can still late pledge, but there's going to be some price increases on a few things and a few things might go away. Uh, 2022, absolutely. We actually, if if our Mycroft plans come in as as we hope, we might be able to do another Kickstarter with those new products right away, um, uh, so that we can even add to orders for for Europe and and so that the European people can get the Mycroft products all in the same batch as this one. So we're working on that because that's all scheduled for first quarter. Uh, delivery, but we may have a lot of that product by November so that we can really help people with those products. We wish we would have been ready with all that. We really had not forgotten about our Mycroft owners. We love them. It's just, it all takes time. Yeah. So there we go. So that's <laughs> that. Well, should we have a toast to our backers? Indeed. We've got some Schaffenberger. Schaffenberger. Yeah, brute excellence is what this is. Here we go. Hopefully this ain't gonna be a mess. It's almost there. Oh boy. Oh, there we go. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> These are a few of uh, goblets that we had made a couple years ago. And of course, we have our goblet holders, of course. Josiah has his goblet holder. I have my goblet holder. So now we need to figure out all, we should have done this ahead of time. We could have figured out like all the languages of the countries we ship to, what their like toast is. Oh man, <laughs> that would have been brilliant. Could have, could have gone through that. That would have been brilliant. I Raymond know, could tell us. I know like, 
four. Okay, like cheers, prost. Uh, yeah, prost. Salut. Salut. Prost. <laughs> so that's all I got. <laughs> that's about all I got. What are you breaking, Berkey? <laughs> well, we are getting ready to do our champagne toast. And I would just like to say, first off, I just want to thank all of our backers. And this toast is to you for all your gracious support. Cheers. <laughs> Well, we have a uh, scalp, uh, a votre sante, oh. Proust, Prost, 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 Gisonheide. Let's say that one. Gisonheide. Gis I'm probably butchering that. Gisonheide. <laughs> Skoll. Skoll. Ah, <laughs> oh, Skoll. We've got Lance Meister, the undead Viking, is here. Rick Orthoff is here. Colin Anderson is here. Cheers. I, hey, we're Vikings. We bleed purple up here, so we better uh, we better say skull. 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 <laughs> or it can be the, the despicable me toast. Clink. Clink. <laughs> Banja. Uh, Shai says, is it Leheim? Leheim. Oh, yeah, sure. sure. In Hebrew? In Hebrew, Leheim. <laughs> Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, our hearts are so grateful uh, to all of you, and thank you so much for all the all the interaction. I mean, it, it, to me, it's like there's times that you know I, I feel like I've answered a certain question like over and over and over, and so it, it can get a little exhausting in, internally. And yet, I always recognize every person that's willing to take the time to ask a question. Uh, it gives me that extra opportunity to engage with each customer because I care about each one. And I've really appreciated when you've had ideas. It's like I always feel a little bad when I can't implement them because I, I analyze it and try to see if that makes sense and if I can do it. And uh, I always want to, but it's always not feasible. So, uh, But I'm always so grateful for the feedback. I'm so grateful for just, I mean, People love this stuff. I love this stuff. And this is all about upgrading everybody's gaming experience, right? <clears throat> Scott says you should be toasting with mead. Ah. Uh, and I like mead. <laughs> Nathan asks, will the mat racks be available for purchase on the website at a later date? Uh, uh, if, if we have any left. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll have to think about what's the next production. Uh, the biggest problem with all that stuff is we really need to make uh, to get the pricing right, we need to make two to 500 of each. And so that becomes a big inventory and a big cost outlay. <laughs> of course, we forgot the most important. Yeah, kapla. Kapla. <laughs> ah, we must do a kapla. Kapla. It's a good day to die. <laughs> good Klingon toast. Yep. But then we have to be drinking blood wine, right? We need some gach. We need some gach and bregged lung. <laughs> Uh-oh. We're in danger of getting on a Star Trek tangent. Oh, again. yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, Man on Fire says, what is the Lord Birkin mat rack made of? That's the same material uh, that our dining covers is made of. It's a heavier-duty three-quarter inch MDF type of product, but it's much denser. It's made for countertops in industrial settings, even hospitals, hotels, and then it's powder coated. So it's electric plated with powder coating. So it seals, has a really nice texture. We were so happy with it. We realized that was a fantastic entry level uh, solution for a dining cover uh, that was super expensive and now even more so. Uh, but these here were super classy. Josiah uses his, the end piece of the gaming cover as a workstation uh, on our topper down in the basement when he's home working. Uh, it's really been fantastic. I think people are going to like them. Uh, Raymond says, yay, more Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of a, when I go to sleep, I'm watching a little bit of Deep Space Nine. So it looks like they're going to try to take back the, the, from the Cardassians and the Dominion, or the Cardassians. <laughs> I guess it's the champagne. <laughs> from the Dominion, so. 
Nice, nice. Uh, I have the last update that we put out. Uh, Josiah did a really nice job explaining the Lake Pledge Manager with graphics, with the questions. And I think it's, we really haven't had too many questions that people had any confusion about it. It was more specific questions about delivery times, addresses, things of that nature. Um, if you ever have a question, you can always email us at support at gametoppersllc.com. Josiah is going to be getting married June 19th. And he's going to be gone for about 10 days. And so Berkey is going to be managing questions and some of, some of those things. But if you can get all of your surveys filled out before he leaves, even like by the 14th, it would really be helpful to us uh, so that we can collaborate on some of the order entry, uh, that type of thing. And he's going to be much more the expert on all the specifics of shipping specifically with the overseas scenarios. So I may be able to help help in a reasonable fashion. However, I might not have all the answers just while he's gone on some of those overseas specifics. But. Uh, Colin says, do you plan on doing the dining cover for the Mycroft in the future? Yep, absolutely. It's already in development. We already have files. We're just working on materials. Right now, material costs for that size is not a good solution for us. So we're we're working through that. We have an idea though that I think is going to work right hand in hand with the leg kit. So we may even be able to do a satchel type of bundle for the Mycroft. Uh, Raymond says, Josiah, congrats again. Will it be a Viking or Star Trek themed wedding? <laughs> Neither. <laughs> you know, it's, you can't, can't get everything, right? <laughs> I'm very excited. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're excited for them too. We're having a big groom's dinner here at our home. So if uh, that week of the of the 14th uh, through the 20th, if you don't see me quite as active as normal, it's because we're going to be pretty, uh, pretty busy doing a lot of things. <laughs> Uh, Scott says the only question I had was if I order the dining gaming cover homes, is there any point in ordering the single end dining gaming shelf? Good question. So, oh, I had the wrong one. Question's coming in. Um, you don't need to get the single end shelf if you have the dining cover because you can just use one end of your dining cover as the, the end gaming shelf. So unless, so you had, part. unless you had multiple toppers that you were wanting you know, one to have a full cover on and one to have a gaming shelf on at the same time, then you'll already have the parts. It's the same pieces. Yep. Uh, Raymond says, or a Sherlock Holmes themed wedding, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Jody says, I hope it's a sunny destination wedding. Tropical. Well, it's June, so it should definitely be sunny here. We have 90 degrees hitting us this week. And so uh, hopefully it's a little less warm. It's supposed to be 99 degrees today here in Minnesota. Yeah. That's nuts. It's, uh, it's, it's fun. We get like crazy winters and sometimes hot summers. <laughs> uh, Daryl says, just completed my survey. Worked great. Very clean. I just, I did use the Matt catalog video from YouTube to make my decision. Viking and Great Wall were my picks. I already have gray wood locket space and fantasy. Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to put that video catalog on the website also because you have still pictures there, but I'm going to put that catalog up because uh, Jamie Keggy and I worked on co uh, collaborating. He did some of the video work for me, and then I did a little bit uh, for a few things and then making it complimentation video so that there's a one-stop place on our YouTube channel and on our website. It's hidden a little bit because it's down at the bottom of the Kickstarter campaign uh, to see it, but it is really helpful to be able to scroll around and see some of the detail and actually the majesty of these maps that is so much better than just that still digital image. Uh, <clears throat> Tubercio, or Tubercio maybe, says, just booked our hotel for Origins. Will we be seeing you there? Yeah, we're intending on going to Ear Origins. We'll you know, there's a little bit of uncertainty yet, but it sounds like uh, I talked to John, Stacey, the director there. We have a three year sponsorship with Origins as we did 400 of the game mats in the boardroom area. And we have a big 30 foot booth there. 
uh, where we also have toppers for the Origins Award games and all of that type of stuff. So we're working through all of that right now. Uh, Colin says, is there any option for those living in Minnesota to just pick up their topper and save on shipping? Yeah. Yes, there definitely is. So if you send me an email at support at gametoppersllc.com, we can go over that. Um, so we do have a $25 pickup fee, but then what we can do is we can go in and remove the rest of the shipping charges uh, and put you on a list for pickup, and I, I can get you more information and details over over email. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. We're caught up with comments. I think we're caught up. Well, um, it's just been, again, uh, the campaign was just really, it's, it's amazing the ups and downs when you're a creator because you're, you have, you have hopes and dreams like everyone else, you know, and you're planning also. So it makes good financial decisions and all of those things. And you go through a wave of emotions through a campaign, but man, our campaign uh, had so many positive moments in it and, and exhilarations. We were exhausted. But then at the end, the way our community came together and supported this product just blew me away. Um, and now, likewise, all of the late pledges are coming in and people are still telling people about our product. And that that still is very much appreciated and still needed. In fact, you know, uh, it costs us a ton of money to operate this business. It's like, oh, gosh, you made $800,000. Well, we don't even double our money on a um, um, vast majority of our product. Um, that leaves a certain amount left over, but it costs us that much to run the business for a year. And we're not extravagant people. So we're still a mid-sized company. We're not a huge company. Um, so all of this factors into us going to the next step too. And most of the profit that we do make actually goes into buying inventory for the next thing. So it's not like cash is really in our hands. And yet we're doing really well. And that again is all just thanks to everybody. So keep pushing the campaign. Please tell your friends they can still get in on these great deals. Yep. Rick says, I didn't even know you offered curbside to go. <laughs> curbside to go, toppers to go. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're a little out of the way in, uh, in Minnesota where we are from like major metropolitan areas. So it can, can be a little out of the way, but if it works for people, we're more than happy to, to help save them a bit. So yeah, absolutely. If you ever have any, any questions or concerns about any of those things, uh, I get a lot of social media questions, whether it's Facebook Messenger or Instagram, uh, uh, sometimes the uh, messages in the game group. I'm really responsive when I see the notification. But uh, even in the Kickstarter comment section now, people will put their comments there. But if it gets buried and then someone asks a question way down there, it's really hard to go find it sometimes. Um, the, the direct messages, it's easier because I get a notification about that particular one that I can respond directly to. But the best way that you are going to make sure we're going to respond to you is just to email us. Um, so if you've got a problem or a question, it's better not to clog up the comment section. It's better just to email us because we will respond and we'll do whatever we can to take care of those concerns. Yep, for sure. For sure. You know, I think uh, I, it looks like I, I, I think, again, uh, because Josiah did such a great job on the backer kit within the limitations of the software. Anyway, there's a few things that you just can't do perfectly, um, especially with some combined shipping scenarios with certain countries or different things. Um, but uh, it's really gone without a hitch. We just really haven't had any problems, so to speak, uh, it's really gone well. And, and there again, I think that's a really a great job by Josiah. And I want to toast to my son who has really uh, allowed me to fulfill my promises. Had he not done what he does, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. And so together we're a team and then the rest of our team that really allows this to happen. And so I want to give a toast to Josiah. Game tappers. <laughs> A couple other, uh, Daryl says, thank you both. Really can't say enough how much I enjoyed your product. Mike says, yep, it was a smooth process. Thanks for all the work. 
Uh, Jody says, any thoughts on doing a crowdfunding campaign in the future with GameFound? Um, I, I don't think so because of the complexity of our product, the back end. Right now, GameFound doesn't have the back end. They're, I think they're a good platform and really up and coming, but I'm not sure they could handle the complexity of our back end. Uh, Ming Yang says, what is the estimated arrival of the packages to fulfillment for Singapore? So currently those are planned to go out with our Australian uh, shipments. So that is currently scheduled for the first quarter of next year. So 2022. We're looking at some things too. We've been able to do some things with DHL that was very similar uh, to what the costs were uh, going through that other scenario. But now DHL is, has some really big surcharges that they're adding on large packages. So, yeah, they've, they've actually completely restricted uh, large packages for the U.S., but it's supposed to be temporary, so it's there's possibility by the time we get to fulfillment that that's an option as well. So we'll, we'll try to figure out the best solution and be, you know, there's very few, you know, I, I don't know, there's a half a dozen or so that are going there, so we can work individually with you and find out the best solution and what you want us to do. If you want an expedited solution, we can provide it. It costs whatever it costs, but. Uh, Daryl says, great product from even better people. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, Well, I think with that, uh, thank you all again. I can't say it enough. Uh, please, again, let us know if there's anything we can do to help you. Thank you for helping us upgrade people's gaming experiences. And when you get a game topper, you really upgrade every game you play from here on. With that, we're going to sign off. You'll be hearing from us in updates. I'm not gonna uh, do a ton of updates, uh, but you'll probably hear from us at least once a month and maybe a little bit more, depending on how our status is going, just to keep you in the loop. Continue the enthusiasm, join our Game Topper Facebook group. Love to hear from you. You'll be able to see what everybody else is doing. We have the Game Topper Facebook page and on Twitter, Game Toppers. Facebook group, love to hear from you. You'll be able to see what